Hey everyone, Dr. Frunke here with a new live video. This was really spur of the moment. Uh, I wasn't really anticipating doing a live video today, but I just got in a new set of scales all the way from Russia, and so I thought that I would go ahead and start talking about that. What's happening, Nero? How you doing, Vinny? So, um, <clears throat> what we've got going on here is a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Actually, in fact, this is the CPM M4 edition that was exclusive to Blade HQ that came with a set of uh, Jade G10 scales. Now, I was not really a big fan of those Jade G10 scales, so a very, very uh, kind uh, viewer went ahead and sent me these really cool Flytanium copper scales, and I have really enjoyed these. Um, I will say that this has added a significant amount of weight, so one of the goals of the uh, video today was to do a quick review about these Flytanium scales so you guys have a good idea of what's going on. So in order to put these on, you have to remove the scales from the PM2, the hardest part being this lanyard tube. Now I had to actually jam one of my uh, Torx bits into this thing just like that uh, on the other side, uh, on this side once the scales were apart and actually hit it with a hammer for it to come out. It was unbelievable how hard this was. Uh, but I did get these on, and I think these are absolutely beautiful. I think that um, Flytanium makes an excellent product. The fit and finish are ideal, but uh, I don't think that I would have purchased the copper ones outright. Actually, I probably would have and then regretted it because these things are friggin' so heavy. How's it going, guys? Thank you for coming in here. It looks like I've got about 30 people. Uh, so here is my other uh, M4 version of the paramilitary, and this one comes in the carbon fiber. This is actually, if I'm not mistaken, still available right now on KnifeWorks.com. If you like the paramilitary too, and you've always wanted to have one of the exclusives, this is the absolutely best one in my opinion. And it came with these carbon fiber scales. But I bring this one out, because let me show you how much this guy weighs, okay? This is 3.66 ounces, 3.66. When you throw these flytanium scales on this guy, 7.43. This is actually even heavy, heavier than two, two PM2s. So it, it's more than double the weight. So you really lose a whole lot of the sort of appeal, in my opinion, of the PM2. I like this knife because it's a big knife, but it's also very lightweight. It's very strong and sturdy, but very lightweight. So uh, this uh, someone just asked, what's the price of this? This is $220 right now on KnifeWorks.com. But something that I have noticed is that in making the handle very, very heavy, the blade relatively seems very light. And so when you're opening and closing it, you get a very unique feel uh, to the handle. And it's it's actually pretty nice. It's kind of cool the way that it feels. But um, basically, these are beautiful things, but I don't think that they are going to be uh, useful to me. I'm going to go ahead and ask that very generous uh, viewer if I can give these scales away as part of a 5,000 subscriber giveaway because uh, I just passed 5,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, and I'm very, very blessed to have that going on. So I'm thinking that somebody might get these scales as a 5,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, maybe they'll like them even more. It's got uh, Frankie's own patina going on here. The, uh, the previous user actually cleaned it up. But the point of today's video is to do some knife surgery, and boy, oh boy, do I have a knife surgery for you guys. So we're gonna do a full-on scale transplantation on this. Uh, so thank you very much, T. Willie, for the uh, congrats there. We're gonna do a scale conversion. So I really enjoy the, PM, uh, the M4 steel. This one, again, is the M4 version with the black DLC, but I also really like carbon fiber. Now, I scoured the internet for some excellent scales. I actually put up a post on my, uh, on my Instagram about some suggestions about who I should go to to get some new paramilitary two scales, specifically in carbon fiber, because I wanted to have sort of a matched pair here, and man oh man, did I discover something absolutely incredible. I had to go all the way to Russia in order to find this set of scales. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this out and show it to you guys. This is from Aramis Akhmedov. This is a guy out of Russia, and he makes these CNC milled carbon fiber scales. Take a look at this, guys. I really hope that this is coming through in good uh, resolution for you guys, uh, but this is absolutely beautiful. This is a 3D milled, 3D contoured uh, 
carbon fiber scale. This one he's calling his grand line pattern, and that's because there's actually some ridges on this and the fluting, exactly, Kyle. Uh, it's really, really, really nice. It's actually not all that dissimilar to this Spyderco uh, Native 5 that I have in the fluted carbon fiber and S90V. Uh, I'll have to get a video up on this one. I actually bought this one from the Spyderco factory uh, when I was there actually about a week ago. So uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is just some knife surgery. But not only are we going to be putting these scales on here, I also have blue hardware. Yeah, blue, not green. They didn't have green. Blue hardware from Blades We Love. And I've got a deep carry clip from Lynch Clips, Lynch Northwest Clips. So we're going to have a great time today taking apart this PM2. And uh, I'm going to go through all the struggles and difficulties of opening up a paramilitary 2. So let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, you're going to need your drivers. Uh, this is the Brian Fellholter Screw It. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just show that off right here. It says Fellholter. And on the other side, it says Screw It. This is a great, uh, a very, very great uh, <clears throat> screwdriver right here. So it looks like I've got loaded a T8, which is going to work fine for the pivot right here. And it may actually be a T10. Uh, so be careful about that one. Yeah, the pivot is T10, but uh, it did unscrew for me with this T8. I'm glad I didn't strip it out just then. So I'm going to go ahead and take these screws off. Now, bear in mind, I've already disassembled this PM2, and so your mileage will certainly vary with how uh, this stuff comes apart and everything. Once you uh, eventually get the uh, the scales off, it actually becomes easier because the uh, the friggin' lanyard tube is so tightly press fit in there that it's pretty much impossible to take it apart. So what I'm going to do is muscle this a little bit, and there comes that part of it. Now we're going to have to figure out how to take this part off. And I'm going to just go ahead and show you guys sort of the technique that I had to use the last time. I just took my little Torx driver here. It seems to be the diameter of the lanyard tube, but not quite the diameter so that it's going to hit the uh, hit the scales there. And I'm just going to go ahead and push it on my table over here so that I'm not pushing on my carbon fiber. Nope. That's not going to work. So I'm actually going to have to step off the screen here for a second and go get my damn hammer again. Oh boy. Oh boy. Sorry. All right. Hammer's coming out. I don't recommend that everyone does this. If somebody has a better solution for how to take this off, just let me know. But uh, yeah, this is straight up hammer and nail kind of stuff going on right here. Uh, it's going to make the whole table shake, so I apologize in advance. Oh, jam myself. Oh. So we'll see how this works, dudes. We'll see. We will see. Mm -hmm. This is why I have to do these on uh, these videos live, because uh, I can't actually record for that long on my phone, which is what I'm doing here. So, bada bing, bada boom, out comes the lanyard tube. And it does require that kind of effort in order to actually take it out. And it's absolutely crazy that you have to do such a thing in order to make that happen. But that is what it is. So off comes the copper scale here. You can see the shiny side without much of a patina. Yeah, the whole table shook. That's right. I had to hit it with a hammer, bro. I'm seriously having to smack the shit out of this thing. Sorry for the language, but seriously, it's very annoying. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and take the rest of this apart. You do have to take the entire thing apart in order to make this happen. So again, T8s on the body screws, T10 for the pivot. Go ahead and be smart about it and get the T10 out here so I don't strip my screw. And then it's T6 for the, uh, for the clip. So we're gonna totally disassemble this knife here. We're getting there, guys, we are getting there. I really enjoy this Fellholter screw it. It's got a really easy uh, sort of ability with to uh, quickly disconnect the different drivers there. It's got a magnetic uh, little thing on the inside so that it actually uh, just grabs the bit. There goes the clip. We're going to get rid of the regular clip. There goes the frame right there. There's the inside of the other copper scale. So we're going to go ahead and get that off the screen. So that was pretty easy. Now, again, your results will significantly vary because getting this lanyard tube out is a nightmare. But jamming that, uh, I would recommend just jamming something in there that's about the size of the lanyard tube, uh, but smaller, say, than uh, 
than the actual diameter. If you have a regular uh, Torx bit, say you have uh, this little boker uh, set up right here. These little guys will do the same thing that I just did. They're the same diameter and everything. I can leave that in there because it's not really that important. Something that I did do the last time I did this was I overbent the... Uh, the lock bar here and it kind of made my centering off so I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a counter bend right there and see what that does that's about all I'm gonna do for it right there there so now we're ready to reassemble so we'll take a look here uh, this again came from uh, Aramis Akhmedov I'm gonna go ahead and bring out uh, this is the the thank you that he sent me hello thank you for choosing my products if you need any information always uh, I'm always ready to help you sincerely Aramis Akhmedov. You can check him out at aeratech.ru. You can email him at uh, aeratech at mail.ru. This is how I got them. I sent him an email here. Somebody's asking my, me like that. I know he makes a, a carbon fiber clip as well, but I wasn't really interested in that carbon fiber clip. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the way that it looks. Uh, and I think that this clip is going to be a little bit better. So Lynch Northwest, when you buy one of their clips, it comes in this nice box. Uh, on the inside, again, Lynch Northwest. You can check it out at lynchnw.com. You can send him an email, uh, and he says, thanks for your support. So very cool. Corey Lynch comes in this nice case. This is really, really nice, honestly. And this is sort of the just-in-case screws. We're going to get rid of those. Made in the USA. This is some really, really nice packaging for a clip that costs like 25 bucks. And out comes the uh, deep carry metal clip. I really am a fan of these deep carry clips. I've pretty much got them on all of my spider coves that I currently have right now. Here are the other three that I've got. And I am going to end up making a deep carry clip video at some point. This is an MXG gear clip. It's very similar to the Lynch Northwest. And these are two from a guy called uh, Blade For Sale. I found him on Amazon and eBay, but uh, he may actually be done making clips. I can't find his stuff anymore. I find that very odd. So, uh, let's do it guys. Let's go ahead and get this knife back together and we're going to see what this is going to look like. So, I can go ahead and get rid of all of the black hardware. Okay, so we're not going to use any of this. We have blue hardware to use. So all of this can go off to the side. Let's just make sure uh, I don't lose any of it. I'm going to put that all right there. Uh, this lanyard tube actually has to come out completely. So let's see if I can, there it goes, it pulled out. Alright, good. So. Now let's go ahead and open up the Blades We Love uh, hardware here. Definitely, uh, definitely. So Blade for Sale after waiting six weeks. Yeah, I waited about six to eight weeks for mine. This is a blue lanyard plug. I don't use lanyards and so I liked the idea of a plug instead of a tube. We're gonna see how that looks and how that works out. Here comes uh, all the body screws. So we have the uh, pivot, we have the clip, and we have the body screws. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just open all these guys up. Oh man, this is exciting stuff, guys. This is exciting stuff. So, from this pile of shit right here, we are going to assemble what I hope is an absolutely beautiful paramilitary 2. We'll go ahead and start with the non-locking side. You can see here, this is Aramis Akhmedov design. Give you another close look up here of the fluting and the beautiful chatoyance that you see right here. Oh goodness, I'm noticing right now that this is milled out in a certain way. I'm hoping that this Lynch Northwest clip is gonna fit in here actually. This may not actually work, which might be a problem. It's not gonna work. Well, I wasn't anticipating that, so we are going to use the regular clip on this knife. All right, good. Moving along, we are going to put the frame into the carbon fiber. Fits beautifully, absolutely perfectly done right there. Uh, we are going to put a phosphor bronze washer right there, which I have already polished in the past, so I'm not going to go ahead and I'm not going to do that again right now. Uh, the pivot is keyed. I figured out that there's a word for the word deed, and it's the word keyed. I keep calling these things deed uh, when I describe these pivots that have uh, this sort of flat side to them, but it, it turns out the word is keyed, so I'm going to start saying the right word. So again, uh, blue titanium hardware from Steve over at Blades We Love, and it looks like they're going to fit beautifully. These are actually made for his custom scales, and that's going in quite nicely right there. So we've got the, uh, the phosphor bronze washer going on there. Uh, what I'm going to do is bust out some nano oil. I use 10 weight nano oil. That's my preferred uh, lubricant. So I'm just going to dab a little bit on there. 
A little dab will do you. Good. Uh, okay. Next, we're going to put the blade on there. This may not actually be the right thing to do. What I'm going to actually do next is put the uh, put these posts back together. So I'm going to put the stop pin in. That's going to require a body screw and a T8. All right. This is not dissimilar from the surgeries that I do every single day at work. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's looking nice, baby. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got another one back here. Got another body screw ready. Uh, okay, let's see. What are we going to do about this? This is tough. This is tough, guys. Okay. This one is freely spinning. The, the, the other one doesn't freely spin in terms of the stop pin. All right, there we go. That's in. Just a little bit loose. Don't really need to have it tight just yet. That wasn't too bad. Good. So now we have a lubricated uh, washer. I'm going to throw a little bit of lube here on the pivot itself, on the actual cylinder of the pivot. It's already had some lube in it from the last time I took it apart. Put this back together. That seems to be working just fine. All right, I'm going to set this down. Uh, see about, let's see if this lanyard plug, oh, yeah, well, it actually is a little bit loose, if I'm perfectly honest with you. Maybe it'll be tight once I tighten everything down. Uh, stick the frame on there. Again, fits very, very nicely. I think everything is going to really come together well once it is all assembled. So, disengage the lock. Yeah, and it's all come together already for me. So that is pretty nice, very nice. Okay, I'm gonna put a body screw in right here. Now, if I could have ordered these in green, I totally would have, but uh, no such thing, no such luck, because Steve said it would take way too much effort to have a full set of uh, <clears throat> a full set of green screws ready. That the uh, the manpower required is far too much to make it worth it. So, uh, okay. That seems a little bit loose right there. This one may be cross-threaded. There it goes, falling right in, falling right in. Good. All right, we can tighten this guy down a little bit. Freely spinning, okay. Tight. Yeah, oh, guys, guys, this is really looking good. Oh, it feels good in the hand. Feels good in the hand, dudes. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. All right, we've got this together. Let's go ahead and put the pivot screw on. Sorry if I'm not reading any of the comments. I appreciate you guys commenting, but talk amongst yourselves because I'm focused on uh, putting this back together. I'll try to do some commentary uh, response here in a few minutes. So let's find the right thread here for the pivot. All right. Oh, that's tight. Okay, let's see, let's see. All right, that's a good one there. See about loosening it ever so slightly, getting it tuned up the right way. Again, using steel, using steel hard uh, screwdrivers on titanium hardware is not such a big problem. Good, I got the centering back on. That's good. By bending that, uh, by bending that frame a little bit. Ooh, this is so much lighter now. That's really nice. Oh, oh, guys, I totally forgot. I also ordered a carbon fiber back strap for this thing, so, oh boy, we get to take this thing apart. Uh, actually, this should actually be a very simple installation. Ah, I do have to take it apart. Oh well, what can you do? All right, we're going to do that real quick. Should be an easy fix, though. Besides, it just means more video for you guys. I always do that. I always put these things together and then realize that I have another step in there. So if you want just this, you can have just the open spacer. But what he actually offers, and what I think is really friggin' cool, is a, uh, a carbon fiber back strap. And it actually locks in here. Yeah, let's see here. Is it going to fit around this new lanyard tube? It is. Yes. 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 Ooh, that's lucky because the uh, the clip is not going to work. Let's go ahead and stick the frame back into the carbon fiber. Yeah. All right, right like that. Put this guy back on as such. Oh, that's so nice, guys. That is nice. Okay. These Russians, man. These Russian dudes know what they are doing when it comes to 
uh, milling scales for knives. I actually have some scales coming in that are absolutely mind-blowingly amazing uh, later, hopefully next week, uh, for my Shirogorov F3R. I actually sent my Shirogorov F3R all the way back to Russia to my good buddy uh, at Department 13 Knives so that he could make the world's very first set of custom badass scales for these Shirogorov knives F3R and uh, that is going to be well worth it. If you guys remember my uh, F3 that I had with the, cop the copper uh, copper dust carbon fiber um, that was an incredible incredible piece. Alright let's see what's going on here. There it is. Uh, I have a new upgrade coming. Uh, my friend, uh, my friend over there, uh, Valera, got his hands on some really wicked new material with regards to uh, making scales, and it's going to be absolutely out of control. Uh, if you are good friends with me on Instagram, you possibly know already what that's going to look like. So again, back on. Now look at that carbon fiber backstrap on this guy. Totally changes the look of the knife. That's really nice. Totally flush. Absolutely beautiful. Let's put the clip on. Looks like only the stock clip is going to work for now. Uh, my plan has failed for a Lynch Northwest clip, which may mean that somebody else gets that for free too. Uh, we may end up doing a double giveaway uh, for Spyderco fans out there. Uh, I recently got on another Spyderco kick, and I have really been enjoying it. I, I bought uh, the Para 3 in S90, I bought the Para 3 in Maximet, and I bought the Para 2, this one here, in the M4 DLC. With the explicit plan of doing this to it, I knew that I wanted to do a scale conversion. Dudes, this is coming together. Guys, guys, do you see this right now? There are 49 of you in here. The, the You 49 are some lucky ducks right now. You guys are getting to see this first. So I can already wholeheartedly recommend... Uh, Blades we love. Uh, Steve over there is a great guy. He makes some of the best uh, aftermarket hardware for pretty much any production knife you can think of. So definitely recommend you go and check his hardwares out. All right, let's see if this is going to work. A mm, little bit tight. It's one of those things. You just got to kind of find, find the right path. Let's loosen this one up. I think that's usually a problem. Always do these sequentially. For those of you that don't do this routinely, I recommend doing each of these sequentially and not over tightening them uh, before they're really ready. This is having a little bit of trouble with that top one right there. All right. I don't want to I don't want to cross thread these at all. So give me a second to focus on this guys and we're going to get this in the right way. a little bit not sitting flush and I don't know why hmm well that's going in I hope it's just not cross-threaded mm-hmm sorry getting silent because I'm trying to make this work I really want this to go in perfectly and not have any problems, but it seems like it wants to have some. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's good enough. So let's take a look at this guy. Man, oh man, there we go. Ooh, that is nice. That totally changes the knife. Take a look at this, guys. Blue hardware, carbon fiber scales, blue plug, carbon fiber backstrap, more blue hardware, stock scale, stock uh, clip I should say. I'm going to have to figure out what's going on with the clip. I think it's just an angulation issue uh, and we'll get that going here in just a second. But good lord, that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I'll uh, obviously have to get this tuned back up the right way. I also over lubed it so when you over lube a washer knife it actually gets a little bit stickier right when you close it right when you put it back together. There it goes. It's coming together now. Wow. Wow. That's even better looking than I really imagined right there. That is a good looking paramilitary too. Uh, and it feels good in the hand. 
Man, I wish that Spyderco would do some contoured carbon fiber on these things. Uh, I think that they have really done a good job with the carbon fiber that they do make, but it would be so much nicer to see them start making some contoured handles like they did on the Shaman, but this, this guys, just take a look here. I hope that the camera is really doing this justice. This is really, really, really nice. There's a little bit of a, uh, of sort of a chamfer right here that's unique. It's obviously got the fluting going on. It's absolutely beautiful. See how the back strap matches? Almost has that uh, blackwood carbon fiber look to it. This actually pushes down into place so that it's even more flush now. That's nice. That is nice. This is a good, good way to customize the... Uh, <laughs> Baz, I just saw your comment. The blue butt plug. Yeah, it is actually a blue butt plug. Actually, as a matter of fact, there is a knife that I think looks like a butt plug, and that is the uh, Guardian Tactical Helix Nano. This is, uh, yeah, this kind of looks like a butt plug to me. I don't know why. It looks like an alien butt plug. Anyways, so um, I have successfully now removed these heavy-ass copper scales uh, from the uh, paramilitary two. Uh, I have successfully added carbon fiber scales from Aramis, and I have added the blue titanium hardware from Blades We Love, and this is a very, very nice outcome. So uh, this was just going to be a quick video, you guys. I really appreciate everyone stopping by and checking this out. Uh, I think I can open the floor here to some questions. I think I'll take a few questions uh, before I kill the video here. Uh, I know I just did this spur of the moment. Uh, weigh it now. Yeah, let's see. What does it weigh now? That's a good uh, a good point there. So uh, just for reference, I'll bring out the other PM2 again. So the PM2, 3.66 ounces, 4.0 ounces on this one. Uh, I'm, maybe it's the, uh, the filled in titanium plug, butt plug back here. Not sure where that extra weight is coming from. Uh, I would imagine that the titanium hardware is lighter than the steel so uh that's it any other questions guys let's uh let's get some questions i suppose i can do a little preview right now uh, now that we've done the main chunk of the uh, video here set this off to the side i can do a little preview of some stuff that's coming up so uh actually a few days ago my good buddy josh at echo does knives sent me a uh, slicey those scales cost about uh, i want to say 100 bucks uh, this is a Grimsmo Rask. Check this guy out. Uh, I actually have a Grimsmo Rask in my possession right now. Uh, and I also still have uh, my good buddy Nico's Grimsmo Norseman, uh, which I'm going to get out here eventually. And uh, these two knives are going to get a comparison video. Obviously, that seems appropriate. I think that the, uh, the Rask is a much better uh, overall knife for me than the uh, Grimsmo Norseman. Uh, I have a uh, JD Vandeventer Gold Mini right here. This is a special knife. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, check out my good buddy uh, Tavarish Works. You probably follow him if you're a knife guy and you're following my channel. But uh, Tavarish really loves his full-size gold, and I got this in hand, and within five minutes I was sending a message to JD Vandeventer, and I have actually a full-size custom gold coming my way. It may be done sometime around the blade show speaking of the blade show i'm going to the blade show and if you're going to be there i hope i get to see you i just got some good news yesterday from my good buddy uh peter resenti that he has just made me a matching pair to my nirvana i asked him for a mini satori and uh, now i'm going to have a mini satori that is going to be paired up with my Nirvana, with very similar finishes. If you follow Peter Rosenti on Instagram, go check that out. His post from, I don't know if it was yesterday or two days ago, shows a uh, mini Satori that looks something like this. So very excited about Blade Show. I know I'm getting the Rosenti. I may be getting the JD Vandeventer. That's very exciting. Uh, another piece of exciting news, uh, I talked to my good buddy Gareth Bull. Gareth Bull had a drop yesterday of his uh, Shamwari model, and uh, it went very quickly, as it normally does. Congratulations to anybody in here who managed to snag one of the 3.3-inch Shamwaris. This is a 3.5-inch Shamwari, uh, and this is my preferred size. Uh, I have a little bit of a modification on this knife right now in the sense that he sent me this pivot screw. 
Uh, originally, this thing has this beautiful zirconium uh, screw on this side. But this came with a plain screw right here that looked something like this. And I said, you know, Gareth, it'd look really nice with a little collar on it like some of the new ones you're doing. And he, he did that for me. It's absolutely awesome. Uh, and when that came in, I said, hey, man, can you build me a knife, please? And uh, I have something absolutely mind-blowingly excellent coming through with Gareth Bull. So please stay tuned to that. It may take two years to get it, but it's going to happen. It is absolutely going to happen. How about something really crazy? Check this guy out. You guys ever seen a Timascus blade? Uh, J.D. Vandeventer makes the gold. This is a knife made out of Timascus. If you guys uh, follow the Knife Cast, which is our new podcast, uh, we had an episode recently uh, called Meet Your Maker, where Ian Pikarski of uh, CMF Metalworks uh, came on. Uh, I actually had one of his knives for a little while. It belongs to Josh at Echo Does Knives. I have that video coming out this weekend, along with this video. I'm going to try to do that Saturday and Sunday, respectively, for these two knives from Ian. Uh, Ian has also told me that he is going to be sending me the new uh, collaboration knife that he just did with Robert Carter. Uh, and I'm going to get to review that on the channel before it goes for sale on at Blade Show in about a month. So look out for that one, guys. That's going to be coming along. Uh, so very happy to be linked up with uh, Ian Pekarski of CMF Metalworks. Uh, and how about one last announcement? Does it do any of you guys uh, recognize this knife? Who recognizes this? Who recognizes this knife? First person to name who this knife belongs to wins a cookie. Anyone? Anyone? Adam E. No, it does not belong to you. No, no. Somebody's got to know this knife. This is a very specific knife. This belongs to one of the dudes with the smallest hands. There we go. Nick Shabazz. There. Oh, I'm getting a wave of them. Good job, guys. You all get cookies. Good job. So this is Nick Shabazz's Millet Torrent. He sent this knife to me uh, so that I could check it out because I've been very curious about the torrent and uh, what better way to experience it than to get the absolute most titified version of the torrent. And so I am uh, I am very nice. Did the plug tighten up or remain loose after assembly? It seems to have tightened up considerably. It doesn't, it's not moving in any way. It's not, uh, it's not rattling around. So certainly it's uh, it, it tightened up right there. So. Very, very nice. Uh, kind of matches the torrent right there with all the blue. I bet Nick would like that a whole lot. So, uh, okay, we have done some previews. We have done some reviews, and we have done some surgery. I would say that that is a successful Dr. Frunky video. I appreciate everybody who came in and uh, watched this live stream. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and bug out here. I got some stuff I got to go take care of, but... I really wanted to bring you guys another live video. I don't do these enough, and I don't announce them often enough. So uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And uh, if you're not following me on Instagram, you should be, because that is where I announce these kinds of things, and I do a whole lot of promoting of this stuff. So uh, I'll put up some posts on my Instagram about where to get all of this stuff. I'll put some links down below. Uh, as to where I purchased all of the stuff for this particular knife uh, that you see here, as well as the Flytanium scales. And, uh, you know, if you guys ever want to reach me, if you ever want to send me a message, you can send me a message on Instagram at Dr. Frunky. Plenty of the guys in this chat already are familiar that I try to respond to every single person. Uh, you could also send me an email at drfrunky at gmail.com. That's not really my preferred method of, uh, of communication because it's a little bit more clunky than the Instagram messenger, but uh, I'm very happy that so many of you joined me. And uh, thank you so much, guys. Click like and subscribe. This is Dr. Frunky saying, take care.